Welcome to another episode of Sacred Sexual Awakening. Uh, I've literally just finished a deep, deep medicine journey. Isn't it funny how frogs, toads and funguses hold all of the infinite wisdom? So I just had a, uh, a buffo ritual um, by two full power shaktis holding space for me. And my intention was uh, to let go of the unicorn that I once was, the tantricorn, the light warrior corn, the pegacorn god, all the different incarnations of the unicorn that I was for seven whole years. So I died recently this year, got very sick, long story short, I'm not sick anymore. <laughs> um, so I'm ready to let go of that part of my life now. Seven years is a long time doing one thing. And being world famous for it as well, and starting the unicorn movement and a revolution that's happened around the world because of this guy who got fucked up on ketamine one time and thought he was a unicorn and told the whole world to become a unicorn. So it just shows, you know, these other dimensions can really help you become whoever you want to be. So mine was to let go of, <clears throat> let go of the unicorn, the old shaft. Uh, and fully integrate and honour all the shafts I've ever been, from the b-boy to the BMXer to the to the scoundrel to to the art director and all that and the unicorn, and to fully love myself, to become confident and charismatic and com um, and juicy and sexy again. Um, and my other intentions were to find a purpose that will bring joy to billions of people. I've done millions now. Let's step it up a notch. Billions. Um, to become a fully actualized human being where all my cylinders are firing at full whack. I'm becoming full human basically, more human than I've ever been, which means letting go of the limited belief systems and all the conditionings I have for my Muslim upbringing and my society from London and, and all the uh, ultra spiritual people. <laughs> And then find, oh no, and then to, um, to be able to sing. So if I want to become a fully actualized human being, I need to be able to open up my voice, uh, to channel martial arts into my body. Um, and what else was there? There's was, there was some more intentions, which was to uh, embody Shiva, Hare Krishna. Krishna, I love him, he's great. Uh, he's really good with all the relationships with the gopis. Uh, and Lakshmi, no more scarcity. So what happened was, uh, I took Buffo, you smoke it, it's a frog that lives underground and has all this DMT because it just stays underground for 10 months of the year, then it comes out and then all these indigenous people grab it, string it up and squeeze its zits onto a bit of glass and then you smoke it and then they release it. Uh, the biggest killers of, it's not vegan friendly, um, it's like honey, um, the biggest killers of Buffo are not humans but being run over by cars. So I went into this space with a friend of mine. Uh, she was the one who actually told me about Buffo. Um, I've done plenty of plant medicines, Yopo was something I recently did, which made my hair look really nice. <laughs> I love all these shortcuts. So uh, she's a, a famous singer, but I'm not gonna tell you who it is. Um, and she's really amazing. And she said, doing medicines will uh, get me to sing. So. Uh, I wanted her in the space, she's the one who told me about Buffal, so it was sheer divine timing that we got together and we're doing this, and she held space for me. Um, I do get shamed by the shamans a lot, so one of the things I have to be very careful of is who I choose. Um, every single shaman, apart from one, um, has shamed me. Um, I'm a man who's multi-orgasmic, I'm a space holder, I could take care of myself, I don't need these shamans to, like, do their things on me. I don't want, I don't consider them that powerful. They're just people that happen to have the medicines, i.e. they're conscious drug dealers. So, um, oh, but it's so sacred. It is sacred, but guess what? We could do this ourselves. Um, so as you can tell, I can, I'm getting a bit fired up about this because the people that shamed me are people uh, <clears throat> who expect a certain thing from people. So when people go and do plant medicines, they puke, they shit themselves, they cry, they scream, and they let out all this stuff. When I do plant medicines and people similar to me, we have orgasms for eight hours. We get taken into a galaxy full of, well, I get taken into a galaxy full of unicorns and all these goddesses like Saraswati, Kali, um, Isis, unicorns, mermaids, pixies, elves, they all come and 
I have a massive galactic gangbang. I have sex for eight hours with these mystical creatures and I'm orgasming, energy orgasming for eight hours. And I'm fully possessed. Um, being a space holder, I've got to be sheep all the time. It's nice for me to actually let go and not be myself. So this is what happened. And this is what happens all the time. So when I come out, the shamans go, oh, you are suffering. You have a lot of pain in your body. We saw so much fear in you. You're releasing so much fear. Oh God, you need more ayahuasca. And, and I tell them, no, I was actually being shagged by mother ayahuasca. I was having eternal bliss and I learned how to love myself. You are lying. The mind is juicy. This is not what you felt. And I'm like, mm, no, it is. And then other people start listening and ganging up on me saying, you are not doing the plant medicine properly this is not a sexual thing i'm like it's not it's self-love and it's energy i'm not like lying there whacking off i'm literally writhing around having an amazing time and then giving out all my orgasms to all the people that are suffering anyway that narrative is something that they don't understand so this is why i have to create a very safe container for me to do these medicines luckily this shakti and my friend are people i know and um they they, they looked after me. So with the first hit, um, I didn't go that far deep. It's kind of like DMT. I went into this other world and then, uh, then I went into this, yeah, it's like a DMT space. More, more of a DMT ayahuasca space. Um, and, and then I started to, I was still here. I didn't go off anywhere. I was still in my body. I was still aware of where I was going. And again, I'm a space holder, facilitator, tantric practitioner, body de armor, and I was just releasing trauma from my body. And things were releasing a lot quicker, so I was able to let go of a lot of stuff. Um, no biggie. Second hit, uh, to be honest, I was there for 20 minutes body de armoring, so I was just releasing trauma from my body. And grief would come out here and there. Second hit was the one. Uh, I went deeper into the, uh, the fractal realm, the DMT ayahuasca realm. There was no characters or unicorns, fairies, pixies or the elves, it, it, or Isis or any goddesses having sex with me. It was just a pretty place. But what happened in this pretty place, something happened where I came back into my body and I was releasing grief and trauma from my, from my body, my being, my emotional body. And through the pain I started singing. So even when I was crying, I was singing. Even when I was laughing, I was singing. And my friend, famous singer lady, she, I, I started singing her name. That was the first thing that... I started doing when I came back into this reality and we were singing to get it's great such a shortcut it's amazing um and I and like she's you know been commenting on my voice here and there saying yeah you keep on harmonizing but you can't hit the notes because uh, I don't know what the notes are because I've never studied music I just sing kirtan and cry a lot um, so, so yeah, this allowed me to breathe, let out a lot of grief through the breath, breathe while singing, uh, and my inner monologue was, I will always speak my truth, and I started singing, I will speak my truth, I will be vulnerable, I will be authentic with what I do, um, and then I started singing, um, Om Namo Shivai. Om Namo And I started feeling, feeling his strength come into my body. Then I started singing Hare Krishna. Uh, then I sobbed so much devotional tears. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna.
And then I started singing Om Shri Mahalakshmi Ya Namaha, which was all about uh, calling in uh, Lakshmi, more abundance in my life. And, and I was like body de-armoring whilst doing this, I was releasing, releasing, and I cried the most with the embodiment of Lakshmi because I was letting go of that scarcity mentality. Scarcity mentality from here, scarcity mentality from here, scarcity mentality from here. <laughs> and that feeling of scarcity is just a feeling and we could shift it and uh, I call in Lakshmi every day this is why I don't work in advertising anymore I just live quite abundantly doing yoni massages and giving workshops and stuff um, and just living my bliss but I do do a lot of sex magic as well, and medicines, and many things. I do many things, so I don't have to work as hard as the nine to fivers. So I was singing, I was embodying the divine masculine, I was embodying the Krishna charisma, I was embodying abundance. And then I was like doing all this breath work. And then this right side, ah, let me come out of my poncho. This right side became fully strong. And I started to feel all this energy coming in. And throughout this whole thing, I've been de-armoring my chest. Hang on, it's like a cape. <laughs> I was de-armoring my chest. This is great. <laughs> wow, I've got a cape. Ugh. So I was de-armoring my chest and letting go of a lot of stuff. And I was like, started to do all these like moves, martial arts moves, which I haven't done before because I'm quite weak. Um, you know, still building my body from my year-long sickness. I really like this cape, it's amazing. <laughs> I am a sacred sexual Jedi. Yes, it was a very powerful ritual. Um, it's funny how you know, governments are stopping people from putting things into their body to make them heal. Uh, drugs do get a bad rep, uh, understandably, because, you know, everything's neutral. Money, sex, um, drugs, uh, food, um, everything's like neutral. It's up to us to either go into the low vibration of it, which is what most of the planet understands, or the high vibration of it. You know, sex, tantra, or sex, shagging. Money, self-love, abundance, you could freedom, money, shit, scarcity, power struggle, fuck, uh, food, high vibration of foods, food, junk food. So high vibe, low vibe, drugs, Shortcuts to awakening, drugs, addiction. So I've lived on both spectrums of all this and um, I believe that you could become a bit more of yourself when you take uh, substances, but most importantly is to keep on practicing what you learnt in the other realm. So uh, I can sing now, which is great. Um, Tantra did help me sing, Kurtan helped me sing, but I, I had no clue on how to do anything. Uh, but I just did a ceremony which has made me a little bit more enlightened and made my hair look really great and I look a bit more buff. So, uh, buffo! You know, if it comes into your life, smoke that toad. It's really great. I'll see you later for some more um, Sacred Sexual Awakening. Subscribe below. I'm fresh out the ritual. It's Christmas Eve. Harry Christmas, everybody. Mwah.